Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Also, a very warm welcome from my side. Is it working? Can you hear me? It's good? Okay, great. So, you have already heard a lot today about cloud native applications, Docker, containers, networking. In the next half an hour, I will show you how we at Swisscom provide you with a platform that helps you to bring your cloud native applications or also just your applications to production, how we base on Cloud Foundry, why you should not build up on your own platform, and a short demo how this works. Short about myself, my name is Lukas Lehmann. I'm with Swisscom. I'm currently product owner for the Swisscom application cloud. I have a background in software engineering and system engineering, and most importantly, I'm part of an awesome team that's building the next the platform, next generation platform for cloud native applications. So let's shortly recap what is cloud native. Maximilian described it today morning very nice. Cloud native means that you have a constant development and feedback cycle. So it means you push something, you directly get feedback from your test systems, from your tester, and even most importantly, from your customers. You directly can get feedback from all your peers that you need for your application. Further, you want to be infrastructure unaware. So your application wants to run on AWS, it wants to run on your Raspberry Pi, or not just another public pass, or on your private platform as a service. For you, it should not matter. For you and your application, it should not matter at all. And this can just be achieved if you use anything as a service. I mean, from the database up to the runtime that you use runtime that you use for your application, you just consume everything as a service from the provider that provides you. So let's take a look how this looks from the developer point of view. So from the developer point of view, it looks straight, straightforward. He just has his Docker container on his Laptop, and I guess all of you has already run Docker Run. Who has not run Docker Run so far on his local laptop? So great, everyone. So everyone knows that feeling. You just do a Docker Run, and it just works. Your application are, is there. You can consume it, and it just works. But bring that to production is way more. We call that the learning cliff. Because, as also already mentioned in some talks, there are way more things that you need to take into account when you want to go to production with your just simple running application on your local machine. You have to have, need to have some orchestration framework. You need to take care of networking, overlay networking. You need to take care of security. All these things you need to tackle. So there are basically two ways to tackle them. And I guess we all know that in IT, so you can either buy something or you can build it. I use here an analogy to a motorcycle. So that means also for a motorcycle, you can go Take the independent parts and build a motorcycle by yourself. It means you can take a tuned brake for more safety. You can use another engine to ride faster. You can optimize it for yourself. If you have bad luck, you may optimize it in a way that it, the motorcycle does not work at the end. Might be. But you have the control, you have the independent parts, and you also need to maintain, and you need to have the overview of the independent parts. Or you just buy it, 
or use it as it's there in the shop or on GitHub, roughly speaking, roughly spoken. So it means we in Swisscom use Cloud Foundry, and I now show you why we use Cloud Foundry as base for our platform. First, I'd like to reference to Joshua McKenty, our friend from Pivotal and former co-founder of OpenStack at NASA. He says, nobody has ever built cloud native apps without a platform. They either build one themselves, as with the motorcycle, or they use Cloud Foundry. So why do they use Cloud Foundry? Let's check here, the platform as a service. On the left side, the industry standard with Cloud Foundry, and on the right side, your self-built solution. The self-built solution could look like that you have something under underneath, like Mesos, to orchestrate and interact with the infrastructure. On top, a scheduler like Kubernetes or Marathon, or whatever that IO scheduler is also great, and your container technology, your container runtime on top, like RunC or whatever else. And but under the hood, Cloud Foundry has all these components as well. So it also needs a container scheduler, which is in this case Diego, which is in the middle, and it needs a routing for that. It has to go router. It needs something for the logs, for that it has the log regator. So all these independent components there, that are also there, like in your motorcycle. But the good thing here is they're merged together in a release, which means every two weeks, roughly every two weeks, Cloud Foundry brings out a new release, which has one version, one tested version of all these components that they work together, that you can consume and that you know that these components are working together, so you know what you get. And to build up on this, there is a foundation behind Cloud Foundry. So the Cloud Foundry Foundation as part of the Linux Foundation. You see there are quite some members and big names and very big names betting on Cloud Foundry, betting on the Cloud Foundry ecosystems, which also convinced us that it's for us the right path to go. So what do we with Swisscom with you? We with Swisscom, compared to the self-built solution, provide you with a Cloud Foundry certified platform. On top of that, we provide some services where you can store your persistent data, like message queue, RabbitMQ, caching Redis, NoSQL, MongoDB, MariaDB for SQL, relational data. We even provide you an object store with dynamic storage with an S3 interface so that you can reuse your AWS libraries and ELK as the, the ELK stack for logs. So collecting the logs and displaying them, searching through them. On your own or on the self-built solution, you would need to take care that you build up on your platform these services by yourself, put in some persistency. Some of these schedulers are not yet able to handle persistent data, especially in containers. And you and your operator team needs to shift from operating Oracle or operating the databases you have now in-house to operating these new technologies. And on top, we provide you a portal where you can administrate everything, which I'll show you in the demo afterwards. So basically, it's 
build, deploy, and run applications in the cloud, while Swisscom takes care of operating your middleware and, and services. So this goes to the paradigm. Take my code, run it on the cloud, I don't care how. Just do it. And we will now take a look with an example um, how this application cloud feels. I hope the Wi-Fi is good enough. Okay. Can you see? Good. Great. So what we see here is the developer portal where I now have two applications running in my space. I have a sample Node.js application running, which just displays some environment variables. I have a, and I have a chat running, a chat that's based on Let's Chat. Um, maybe some of you know that. It's basically a Slack clone, an open source Slack clone based on, on Node.js and MongoDB. Let's chat, you can check it out on GitHub. So I just took this application and pushed it to our cloud. Further, to provide the state for this application, the state for this chat, we can take a look how it looks like. So this is the chat, and you see the URL is chat.scap.io and chat.scap.cloud. So if you want, Take your phone or take your laptop, check it out, and hang out with me, and let's chat. To provide the state for this data, it's a MongoDB. MongoDB for the MongoDB, we have used the, the new MongoDB Enterprise, one of the new MongoDB Enterprise services. Can re uh, make it a little bit bigger here, where we have 32 gig of memory and 320 gig storage capacity. So it should be enough for a little chatting. And it's high availability because it's a free node replica set that you get here. I already have opened here the management console of this MongoDB. So what we can see here is, we see here the three members of my replica set, where I can check the metrics. I see now member one, this one is member one is primary basically, the other are in secondary mode, and I can get various stats that I need, like how many concurrent connections are open, what's the DB storage, can get out that stats of my database. So if we now go to primary, we see a little bit more insights in the database. We see what exactly goes on, what exactly, how many concurrent connections we have now on this primary. And we can also search for it and see when did we have a peak on our application. Let's go back to the, to the space and show you what, what else could be done. So you can push apps, and currently we support these technologies out of the box. So from static file means a simple Nginx or Apache that you get, Java to Ruby to Node.js to Python to Go to PHP, or just your binary, C binary or whatever it is then, or you can use a custom build pack for other languages. There are build packs around from Haskell to yeah, various languages as you, and you can just reuse them or write your own. And as mentioned already in the presentation, as in the slide beforehand, you have these services available which you can bind to your application and then run, uh, use it for the state to interact with your application, basically. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to have some some fun here. Um, I have prepared on the chat. Ah, hey, we see some we see some folks over here. Hey guys, <laughs> um, chatting with me. Nice to have you here. And I've prepared the spam channel. You see already a bunch of messages from my spam bot before that were created. And maybe some of you know the loader.io. Loader.io, with loader.io, you can test your application. You can load on them. So what we have here, we have 2,000 clients that go over one minute to that URL, basically, and insert, can you read it? Yeah. Insert there this lorem ipsum message. And you see now, we have one instance of this application running. One instance of one gig with one gig RAM. So when we run this test now, it will most likely fail and completely crash up this instance. Nevertheless, I'm going to do it now. So you see, there they start to hammer it, and we basically don't get any response back. It just starts sending, and when we now check on the portal here again, The, the CPU consumption goes up. By the way, we also have everything on, on the CLI, so also we, we can get here the details of the app. So we see now 92% of CPU is used. And now we see, yeah, 92%, okay, around that. We see we got some responses, but basically the test was aborted because the error threshold of 20%, which I said to 20%, was reached. And now we can also see here, when I refresh, it will not load. It, the app instance itself just crash, crash and has an overflow by now, because it's just one instance. So what we're going to do now is we're going first to restart, restart this instance. So this single container where this Node.js app is running in, now gets recreated, and with that recreation, all the load goes away, we, we clear it out, and then we are going to scale that out that application. So we can do that again either through the portal, by clicking here on that we want to have 10 instances, they save, and then it will create it will start up 10 containers with this Node.js application. Here. And now when we check here, again, the chat, we see already these 10 instances are all up and as are, some are in starting mode. The first one is running. When we check here again, now they're now all running. It means in some seconds now we just scaled from one instance to 10 instances. 10 instances. What we're going to do now is, I can again check here. Yeah, it refreshes. As band test. And we're going to rerun the test to see if it now can handle the load. So we just click on rerun. And now we already see that we get successful requests from the application back. So we see, and here it stays around this, these numbers. So that means all these instances are capable to handle these 2,000 concurrent clients. So when we now check again, the load here, you see, it's distributed through all the different instances. Some are, some are more idle, some less. 
it's just just distributed. Also, when we refresh here in the portal, where you basically see the same view, you see that. And here you see the messages coming in. This this client spamming here. And here we see now they're certainly under load so far. And what we see, the test could successfully finish. So you saw now, I did that scale out manually. There is an API, so you can just push as a check what's the current state of my app, how much CPU is used, and then basically up on that, take an action and say, okay, now I want to scale out because I've reached a threshold of 80% CPU usage. And also here on the MongoDB, let me take a look. Make a little, let me look, look, look a little bit bigger. You see here that we have now, oper there were operations ongoing, a lot of inserts because these 2,000 uh, clients posting new messages. And we also see here the concurrent connections on the database increased dramatically because we scaled out from one instance to 10, instance, 10 instances. That to that. Uh, let me shortly show you another cool feature. So I've mentioned the uh, It's also available under chat.scf.cloud, which is my custom domain, basically. So when I go here, chat.scf.cloud, you see the yeah. same thing. And now I want to show you the, the routes, our latest certific SSL certificates feature. So what you see here is after route, chat.scf.cloud, when I go here, HTTPS, chat.scf.cloud, it shows me, hey, you have not a valid certificate there. So what we can do is, we can just add here, secure my route. And then, via Let's Encrypt, it creates for you, you route a certificate, puts it on our entry point, and when we now refresh here, the dam, I have a valid certificate over here, a secure domain. That from the demo part, I followed the yellow card. I would love to show you other features, but let's move on. According to, let me reference to the talk from Antoine this morning. We have we have seen there this pass that public pass, and yes, we have we have also encountered that that on public pass the market is very hard, and to that. We have two offerings. We have on one side the public, developer.swisscom.com, where you just can go, swipe your credit card, try it out, play around. And we have virtual private, where on virtual private you get your own platform. You can integrate it with your IDPs, with your Active Directory, that you can log into the portal and so on with your Active Directory. You get your branded portal and you get additional support, 24-7 support. But you have a min minimum commitment of three months because we need to set up all the stuff for you. And you also can get a VPN interconnection to your data center, basically to go into the hybrid cloud mode. As you've seen, we, la we launched in, Oct in October last year and went GA with the virtual private thing, virtual private product in February this year. As of now, we have these use cases running on the application cloud. So we have the developer.swisscom.com, which is the public offering. We have Swiss3, transferring a lot of their workload to the application cloud. Java WebSphere load. We have Torma Kaba with an interesting case that was already tangled a bit by Christoph, where Adriano is sitting here. So if you want to talk, get his experience or more info about his use case, 
talk to him. And we have the internal application cloud, so means we and we within Swisscom also have a lot of applications that need to be rebuilt. And yeah, I mean you know it we have a ton of applications that are built up on various different runtimes. And for that we have also a virtual private mandate for all these internal applications. And we have one for mycloud.ch a product that recently launched for all our residential, residential customers. So if you have an Infinity Abo, you may know it. So a Dropbox clone for within our data centers with Secure Store. What's up next? We plan to release a Redis HA service. So you have seen MongoDB HA service is there with free node cassette high availability. We plan to release a Redis HA, where you can provision a Redis cluster. Rabbit MQ HA, where you can provision a Rabbit, as you can provision your service instance within a Rabbit MQ cluster. We want to provide you with Git as a service and a continuous integration service to fulfill the developer tools that you need on our platform. Yeah, with that, I've just finished just on time. Is there some time for questions or not? Little, okay. So we can take one question if there is one, otherwise I'm around. And we also have the meetup this evening here in this room. So feel free to join there and hang around and talk about Cloud Foundry, Swisscom, Cloud Native, whatever you want. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um.